needed to be attendance. Okay, so we left off, we've been talking about max min problems. We're going to talk about that some more. Some of you, uh, Rachel asked, do you have to send me those tables for the problems that you're doing for tonight? The answer is no. I just wanted to see those for the problems that you did for Friday. And a few of you need to send those to me. Um, I haven't gotten them yet from a few of you. So um, at the end, I'll let, after I stop recording at the end, I'll let people know who I still need to get them from, okay? Sounds All right. good. So our first question says, find the dimensions of the rectangle of maximum area that can be inscribed in a semicircle of radius A if two vertices lie on the diameter. So for example one, we have a circle and We actually are only interested in the semicircle, and we're putting the diameter on the x axis. This is the circle x squared plus y squared is equal to a squared. And what we want to do is we want to put a rectangle inside. The length, right, because it's symmetric, <coughs> if we go out to x here, this is also an x. So our length is 2x, and our height is going to be y. So this is going to be y. And xy is can a you, point. Can you make um, the rectangle a little darker? Is that better? I uh, like the rectangle inside the, the half circle. Okay. Is that Thank better, you. Kevin? I can yeah. see it now, yeah. All right, and so we're supposed to find, now remember the length is two X, it said find the dimensions. So the length is two X and Y, that's the width, to maximize area. You're given x squared plus y squared equals a squared. And the y value is going to be this time, if you forget when you solve and take the square root of both sides, you're actually okay, is the square root of a squared minus x squared. We want the positive y equals the square root of a squared plus x squared. Okay. Everybody understand where I got this from? Do I need to explain that more? Okay. All right, so so let's see. Kylie, what's the formula for the area of a rectangle? Um. No, that's area, sorry. <laughs> area, <laughs> area of a rectangle. Just the general words for area of a rectangle. Like um, length times height. Okay, like that, exactly. And so our length is 2x 
and our height is y. <coughs> So we now have our, our equation, but what we need is we need to have it all in terms of one variable. So now we're going to go ahead and substitute in our square root of a squared minus x squared. So we have a equals 2x times a squared minus x squared to the one half. Now I chose this one because sometimes when we're doing application problems, it's really easy to take the second derivative and that's an easier way to tell a max or a min rather than having to look on both sides of the critical number. However, this is one where we are going to look at both sides of a prime the critical number that we get, okay? So go ahead and take that derivative and then we'll compare. Just so you know, Professor Nichols, since I figured we missed the test, I made myself some cookies. Oh. <laughs> All right, so if we take the derivative of the first, we're going to get 2 times a squared minus x squared to the 1 half. Alexis, should I ask you which rule we're using to do the big part of the derivative? We're using chain and product rule. Okay. Oh. So now we have plus 2x times. Now we're going to use the chain rule. Alexis, as long as you mentioned it, why don't you take the derivative of a squared minus x squared to the 1 half? All right, so it's going to be 1 half times a squared minus x squared. And then I just put negative 2x, but I'm not sure if we need to do anything with a squared. No, a squared is a constant. You forgot to tell me about the negative one Negative one half, half too, there we go. <laughs> okay. So, like I said, do we really want to take a second derivative, Alexis? What do you think? I personally don't. <laughs> okay. So this is one of those cases where we're going to go back and we are indeed going to um, look at just the first derivative test to decide whether it's a max or a min. Okay. So. I'm going to rewrite this as 2 times the square root of a squared minus x squared. Now, I've got a 2x and a negative 2x, so that's going to give me a negative, but I also have a 1 half, so that's 2x. So if I multiply 2x times 1 half, that's x times the negative 2x, so that's going to give me a negative 2x squared. Is everybody good with that? Yeah. All over the square root of a squared minus x squared. And we're going to set that equal to zero. <clears throat> this 
this is a fractional equation. So when we have a fractional equation, what do we need to do? Shay, what do we do when we have a fractional equation? Can't we find like a common denominator? Okay. Them? And then multiply through by it. So we only have the denominator as square root of a squared minus x squared. So we're going to multiply by square root of a squared minus x squared. So we now have 2 times the quantity a squared minus x squared because the square root of a squared minus x squared times the square root of a squared minus x squared gives us a squared minus x squared minus 2x squared is equal to 0. Okay, go ahead and solve for x. Did everybody get an A in the numerator? Yes. And what about the denominator? It's going to be the square root of 2. Everybody good with that? Can you go over how to do that? Sure. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply out so I get 2a squared minus 2x squared minus 2x squared equals 0. And so I have 2a squared is equal to 4x squared. So x squared is equal to a squared over 2, because I divide both sides by 4. Corbin, are we good now? Yeah. Kay. Thank you. All right. So everybody good with a over the square root of 2 for x? All right, so next up we have, when we look at this, remember it asks for dimensions. So, and we also have to make sure it's a max. So we have a over the square root of Two. Okay. So what's larger than a over the square root of two? One. Well, we don't know how, a numerical value, so we have to. Would it be a? A would certainly be larger, but that would give us a zero in the denominator here, which would not be helpful. So, um, anyway, so maybe we want to go to the other side. So, in other words, what when we're trying to decide to pick a value, right? Picking an easy value over here would be a, but that gives us a zero in the denominator. Okay, so let's choose is zero. We were told that. A was the radius, so A is a positive number. So if we go over here and look at zero, if we look at zero, this term is zero. What about this term, positive or negative, if X equals zero? Positive. Okay. 
don't sound there was such a question mark at the end of that, Kevin. I don't know what you're talking about. I was fully confident in that answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you didn't, see, you didn't see my facial expression, so you would never know. That's right. But then everybody out there in TV land or YouTube land wouldn't know either. So, all right. I'm sorry. I don't want to put zero there. I want to put negative. So it's positive and then negative. So does that give us a maximum? Yeah. So it wanted the dimensions. The dimensions are 2x. So that's 2a square root of 2 over square root of 2. What about y? Go ahead and calculate y. Remember y is this expression here. Wait, uh, okay. Terry, did you come up with something for Y? Not yet. Okay. Leonardo? I have it. Okay. So what you would do, it, it would be a divided by 2a divided by the square root of 2. Because if you insert the 2x. It's in. just going to be, so you're not going to do this part. It's just going to be a over the square root of 2, Simone. OK? Because we're just evaluating this part. So when we square. This gives us a squared over 2. a squared minus a squared over 2 is a squared over 2, right? We just have a 1 half, and then we take the square root, and we get that expression. So there's our answer to the first problem. Interesting. Question on that. All right. So one of the places that maxes and mins are used is to find a maximum profit. And so our next problem is looking at rental of hotel rooms, not something that's happening right now, but a hotel that charges $80 per day for room gives special rates to organizations that reserve between 30 and 60 rooms. If more than 30 rooms are reserved, the charge per room is decreased by a dollar times the number of rooms over 30. Under these conditions, how many rooms must be rented if the hotel is to receive the maximum income per day. So we're supposed to find X equaling the number of rooms. And we want to maximize the revenue. We're given that the rate is $80 per day. And for every room over 30, what happens? Room rate, what changes? Is it double? 
Uh, no, it's $1 more. by per room or times the number of rooms rented. So the room rate goes down by a dollar per room. Okay, so let's put in words first how we would calculate the revenue. Okay. So what we're gonna multiply two things together. Amanda, what do you think we're gonna to multiply together? to find out how much revenue we're going to make. Um, the rate per, okay. per day times the, the number of days. rate per day times what? Um, per day number of per rooms. Room. Number of rooms. OK. So number of rooms. times rate per day per room. This must be the off season. <laughs> it definitely is the off season in the ski areas, right? It shouldn't be. I'm trying to go snowboarding. There's still snow up there. I don't see why I can't go snowboarding. <laughs> hey, parks are open. Just go hike up a hill. That's what I was saying. I, I can go backcountry skiing, but I can't go snowboarding at a ski place. Like, that's still outdoor physical activity. Just go oh. get a dump truck or two and steal some snow and bring it to your house. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Absolutely. Okay. So, R is equal to x. Now, how are we going to figure out the rate per day per room? So it certainly starts out at 80, but then what happens? After 30, it drops. OK, so it's minus $1 times how many are over 30? So how do we figure out if X is the number of rooms, how many of those are over 30? Would it be 30 X? Nope. That would 30 be 30 plus X. So if I have 50 rooms, how many of them are over 30 rooms? 20. 20. How did we calculate so X, that? X minus 30. I was gonna say magic. <laughs> hey, magic works wonderful ways, my dude. Okay, so we have R equals X times, let's simplify the expression inside the parentheses. So would it just be 110 minus X? 110 minus X. Does everybody agree with that? Anybody have a problem with that before we go on? I have a problem with my own statement. He's losing his confidence and his magic. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this out because it's easier to take the derivative when it's 110x minus x squared. Well, that's easy. It's an easy derivative. Okay. So R prime is equal to, Alexandra, what's the derivative of 110x minus x squared? Um, it's going to be, are we going to bring down the 2 first before multiplying it, or are we going to multiply it? We're just, first? so this is 110x yeah. minus x squared. So we have two terms. We're going to take the derivative of each term separately. So what's the derivative of 110x? Hold up a minute. I think I just encountered a small problem. Um, what if the what if x is below 30? We're we'll like, we'll talk about that in a moment, Jonathan. Okay. okay. So we get 110 
And then, Alexandra, what about the derivative uh, of x 2x. squared? 2x. And we'll go ahead and do our double prime at the same time. Uh, let's see. Did Alex L join us today? So we'll go to Alex M. Uh, it would just be two, negative two, sorry. Okay, negative two. So that tells us that what kind of concave up or concave down, Alex? Concave up? This is concave down. 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 Yeah, okay. down. down. Thanks, Alex. So would that be a max? Make this a maximum. Which implies that it's the max. So, we're now going to go ahead and, Jonathan, we're going to take care of your concern in a moment. So, we need to find the number of rooms. That's our critical number. So, Rachel. When I set r prime equal to zero, what do I get for x? Rachel? Diego, you want to give her a hand? Um, I got 55. Okay. Explain to us how you got 55, Diego. Um, move 110 to the right side, divide by negative 2. Okay. All right. So, x is equal to 55. Now, Jonathan, you were concerned what if they didn't get up to 30 rooms? So the most profit that could be made before you hit 30 uh, reservation for 30 rooms is 30 times 80. Jonathan, do you agree with that? So if, if, we didn't make it all the way above 30. The most profit they could make is when they were renting out 30 rooms at $80 each, which is going to give us how much revenue? That should give us $240. How about 2000 No, 2400 Yes, sorry. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and come back here and evaluate our revenue when x is equal to 55. Oh, that's going to be a big number. No, it's not. So it's 55 times 55. Better known Ms. as? Nickel. How much? 3,025. Everybody good with 3,025. Yeah. So Jonathan, notice that this still is our max, but you're right. We needed to double check that they didn't make more revenue just selling the rooms at 30 rooms for $80, okay? Okay, yeah, I can see this now. Okay, all right. We good with this question? We've got one more. Miss Nichols. Yes, Rachel. Sorry, I lost connection and I couldn't get my audio to work. Okay. Yeah. But it you're was back 55. with us. Okay. Yeah. All right. So 
Our next one is the owner of an apple orchard estimates that if 24 trees are planted per acre, then each mature tree will yield 600 apples per year. For each additional tree planted per acre, the number of apples per tree decreases by 12 per year. How many trees should be planted per acre to obtain the most apples? Okay. Whoa. Lots of words again, right? So, what are we doing? We're a off a bridge. Johnny Appleseed. We're planting apple trees. Okay. So, so we're finding how many trees we can plant for the most apples. Right. So the find is x per which acre is going to equal the number of trees. per acre <laughs> to maximize number of apples. We're given like this guy is starting to fade. I think everyone's minds are starting to fade. 24 trees per acre gives us 600 apples per year per tree. Per tree? Per tree. Oh, okay. Okay. So our equation is we want to know how many apples. And let's put down in words what we're going to multiply together. And then we'll write an equation for it. So let's see. Danielle, what are we going to multiply together to get the number of apples per acre? Um, would it be 24? Well, it'd be the number of trees. Times 600. Yes. Number of trees times what, Danielle? Number of apples per tree. So we have A is equal to X times A. So this is where we have to put our thinking caps on. So X is the number of trees, okay? And, oh, what didn't I write down? What happens if I plant a new tree? For every new Why tree. It's minus 12. Oh, for... uh, sorry, uh, I don't have a... Piece. Yeah, it should be minus 12. Okay. So for every tree, it goes down by 12 apples. Okay. So we're going to start out with 600. Minus, now is it every tree over the 24? It says for each additional tree planted per acre, the number of apples per tree decreases by 12. So 
once again, it's going to be the x minus 24, like it was the x minus 30 in our previous example. Wait, does it mean x minus 12? No, times 12. OK. So what it said was oh, for every okay. tree over 24 trees, so that's why it's x minus 24, you lose 12 apples. Okay. Kevin, are we OK with that? Yeah. Do I need to say it one more time? No, I got it. OK. All right, let's simplify this expression inside the parentheses. X I'll do the easy part. It's minus twelve X. Eight hundred and eighty eight minus twelve X. Eight hundred eighty eight eight hundred eighty? Eight. Eight hundred and eighty eight. Okay. Hey, at least it's not six six six, because that would be a big trouble. Hopefully seven seven seven. Okay. Oh please, not in math class. All right. So A is equal to eight hundred eighty-eight X minus twelve X squared. Yep. Holly, you get to take the derivative of A. Holly, what's the derivative? Athena, you want to help Holly out? Can you not hear me? Oh, no, I couldn't hear you. Oh, sorry. Um, okay. It's 888 minus 24x. Okay. Now, as opposed to our first example, this one, it's really easy to take the second derivative. So, Athena, what's the second derivative of this expression? That would be negative 24. Negative 24. It's a negative, so that says that it's going to be concave down, which does indeed give us our maximum. Easy. Yes, yes. Nichols? Yes. I have a question. Yes. Since 888 is also, so uh, you can divide it by 12, would it also work if you divide the whole thing by 12? Make it 74, for the first derivative, it would be 74x minus x squared? Or, no. I mean, I mean for you can the first factor it out, but it, it isn't going to really, in the long term, save you anything of factoring this expression. So you would only do that if you, you were se setting a prime to zero, then you well, can do that. Yeah, we're going to set a prime to zero. So if you want to factor out the 24 now, that would be a good place to do it. Okay. So we want to set a prime equal to zero. So that says 888 minus 24x is equal to zero. Deshaun, what's x? What's um, x? One. Um, 111 over 3. OK, keep going. It starts Keep going. With a three. 
111 over 3, it, you can divide that. I have faith, Deshaun. Oh, yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's that, like a 3 and then a 7, maybe? That's, that's exactly what it's like. So if we want to maximize the number of apples that's going to occur when the number of trees is 37. Okay. All right. So let me make sure I've got everybody who is here. I'll just call out those individuals who are not. I'm going to, before I do that, I'm going to pause the recording. <laughs>